Hello there. The creature from my nightmare, the scary thing I found under a log. Your unsuspecting victims are wood lice in the valley who you spear in the back alley if you want, where you can always find them. And you'll have isopods for dinner with things that look like they'll never end, like they'll never end. What are you? And why so scary? I cannot sleep after what I found tonight. I need somebody to explain. These sickle chillis array, they're huge and they are haunting every time. And as I stared, I noticed you don't use webs like other spiders for catching things and eating their insides, which makes me want to call you a freaky cream bum devil nightmare. Your fangs look like they'd cause so much pain tonight. So much pain tonight. Well, hi there. This is a woodlouse spider, also known as an isopod eating spider, and the freakiest thing I would find flipping rocks as a child. In most ways, it looks just like the ugliest spider I've ever seen. But then you get to the chelicerae. Those things are colossal. And they always seem a bit cranky. Wolf spiders tend to run away. These guys just sit there with their chelicerae wide open like they were hoping that you'd stop by for a bite. They were terrifying. And it was my practice to just leave them alone when I found them. But then I got to wondering, is this Hellspawn nightmare a good pet? And is it the best pet nightmare for you? To figure this out, we need to score the creature of my nightmares based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, I give the Woodlouse spider a score of one out of five. Look, I've never touched one of these things. It isn't on my bucket list of things I would like to touch either. And keep in mind, I've held Lilith. That said, there is no actual danger involved with handling a woodlouse spider. This is for you. They're actually very fragile spiders and are highly susceptible to rupture. They're basically tiny little water balloons with monster fangs and some legs for scurrying about. They can bite, and they do bite, but their bite isn't going to cause anything more than a little irritation, redness, and some swelling. I suppose it is possible that you could have an allergic reaction, but I haven't heard of this as a common problem. If you hold one, you can do so without being bitten, but if you are bitten, don't look surprised. And unless you want to explode your spider, you'll just need to let it happen. Mostly just handle them to transfer them to new enclosures and do so very gently lest they rupture. When it comes to care, we give the woodlouse spider a score of 5 out of 5. Okay, so it turns out that these things are adorable. Not the way that they look, they're horrifying, but the way that they act. They are amazing mothers. It appears as though she not only defends the egg sac before the babies hatch and tolerates their presence after hatching, but that she actively cares for the spiderlings and will regurgitate food to them like a mother bird. Interestingly, given that human babies will respond to a kiss with an open mouth, suggests that kissing may have originated the same way. So they protect, feed, and even kiss their babies. That's awesome. So what do you need to do to care for these spiders? Well, you're going to need a container, preferably something not too tall as they may rupture if they fall. It should have some moist but not wet substrate that won't mold. Eco-Earth would be a great option. Remember, it needs to be damp but it shouldn't be sopping. Excessive dryness or wetness can be deadly. The enclosure does need to have a lid and some ventilation. As for food, they unsurprisingly eat isopods. Isopods are not a particularly vulnerable prey due to their thick armor and capability to conglobate. That is, unless they have some freaking ginormous chelicerae, and these do. That said, they do not eat isopods exclusively. In damp areas under rocks and logs, isopods are a common prey source. That said, they seem to take other feeders like crickets and even earwigs with the same amount of gusto as they do isopods. If you choose to feed them insects and isopods from outside, just be sure they haven't been exposed to pesticides or other harmful chemicals. The best source would be feeders that you breed yourself. Isopods are actually very easy to keep and propagate. So basically, you need a jar with moist but not wet substrate and a small arthropod about once a week or whenever the balloon looks underinflated. 
I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who do so much to make this channel better. You've helped us get the equipment required to film these animals and show them to you in all of their nightmarish horror. And also, you know, kind of as our way of saying thank you, we have a lot of features for those of you that support us at Patreon. For example, uh, we make extra videos every week called Patreon Extras. There's something though that you need to know about Jason, who is primarily responsible for putting these together. He also likes to do bracketed, oh, like taste-offs of various foods. The other day we got together and did a timed, like using a chess timer Jenga tournament, and it was awesome. And I can't convince him to make a video of these things, but he loves you guys a lot more than he loves me. So I want to encourage you guys to ask him to make a video of one of these tournaments and release it at least to you guys on Patreon. And I think if enough of you ask, he'll actually do it. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Woodlouse Spider a score of four out of five. Really, these are pretty hardy captives provided that you don't crush them, let them fall, let them dry out, or soak them. There's a reason they're found all over the world. That said, they are prone to rupture. When it comes to availability, we give the Woodlouse Spider a score of five out of five. These guys originated in the Mediterranean area, but they're now on every continent except for Antarctica. If you want one, start flipping rocks. Be careful when collecting them as they can pop. And don't feel bad about collecting them from the wild. Unless you're in the Mediterranean, we're talking about an invasive spider that has colonized the world. They're doing fine. If you catch one that's an adult female, you're probably going to have the cool experience of observing her raise her babies. You can tell if it's a male or a female by looking at the pedipalps, which are those tiny little things that kind of look like small legs right at the front. Males will have a bulbous end to their pedipalps. Though their courtship can be a bit rough, there are people that breed them in captivity, so getting one captive bred is a possibility in many areas if you don't want to go catch one. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Woodlouse Spider a score of five out of five. I mean, the spider is free. You probably own a jar or other suitable enclosure with a lid, a handful of eco-earth, a spritz of water, and you're done. And this is why, overall, we give the Woodlouse Spider a score of 4.0 out of five. I still don't want to touch them, but they are surprisingly adorable and reasonable to keep little creatures but they look like nightmare fuel. Who wins the nightmare battle, by the way? These vinegaroons or tailless whip scorpions. If what you want is the creature from my nightmares that turns out to be a great mom and all around great pet leggy water balloon, then the woodlouse spider might be the best pet nightmare for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. So much pain tonight. Wow. <laughs> 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 oh have the cool experience of observing her raise her babies. That was probably too much emphasis <laughs> on some of those words. <laughs> Interestingly, given that human babies will respond to a kiss with an open mouth, suggests that kissing may have originated the same way. You looked it up. research. Hey, wait, hold on, hold on. I gotta. <laughs> We're gonna pause this right here. <laughs> Given that human babies will respond to a kiss with an open mouth. Mm -hmm. So you go, mm, and they go, ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that when I first saw that, I was like, oh, I bet this is, I bet human mothers pre chewing food for babies before baby food was widely available. Yeah. I bet that's how kissing sort of became a thing. Because if you think about it, kissing's sort of an odd behavior. Yeah, but... It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just go with it. Open mouth. Open mouth. Give it a try. Catch a baby. Catch a baby. Just try to smooch it in the face. Can you imagine if they were huge? Oh. No, I don't want to imagine that they were huge. <laughs>